Jumpsy CDO was birthed out in the year 2008 when April Jade Bonoano and Loss came to Cagayan de Oro to take up law at Xavier University Ateneo de Cagayan. Aside from being a student, she held several Bible studies in the campus. Jamsi first generation was then born, and these are Harad Salvan, Corina Unat, Rhea Malmis, Dame Sambaan, Sasa Idarango, and Niza May Kapol. Prayer meetings were held every day at 6 a.m. on the campus grounds of Xavier University. The Lord added the number of the saved people daily. With several Bible studies being held, Jamsi, or Jesus in my circle back then, had to look for a place outside the campus to continue to hold gatherings as persecutions were starting to grow. The first Jamsi Center was right in front of Xavier University, where Jamsi CDO held its first Sunday service on August 8, 2010. As the church continued to grow, we transferred to another location at Velas Hay Street. Pastor April Jade Bunoan Onlos was officially ordained as pastor of the church by our St. Gentiles Christ Ministries SGCM Senior Pastor on August 4, 2013. In 2014, Pastor April Jade Bunoan Onlos, who was then already a lawyer, married Dr. Pastor Jerry Onlos. Pastor Jerry was ordained as pastor and licensed officiating minister of the church on June 26, 2016. Today, the church is located strategically for accessibility and for the purpose of catering more people at third floor Philinvest building, Vela Street. It also changed its banner and is now known as Jesus in My City Church CDO. Truly, great things start from small beginnings. And with God's faithfulness, Jamsi continues in our thrust of knowing God more and making Him known. Our church history is truly His story, and you are part of it. Let's journey together. You matter.
Our church vision is to see every transformed life become a committed part of the movement of building Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and mission-driven churches in every campus, workplace, community, and nation. God placed in us a desire to see people transformed from darkness to light, from brokenness to wholeness, from impure to pure, directionless to purposeful, depressed to joyful, lost to being found, failure to victor, from being a sinner to being a child of God through the life-transforming gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As God has transformed them, we envision to see these individuals become not just a part, but a committed part of what God is doing through the church. By being a committed part, we mean willingness to sacrifice, persevere, serve, and pay the price of time, resources, strength, and even lives to take an active part in God's movement of building Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and mission-driven churches thriving through discipleship in the different campuses, communities, workplaces, cities, and nations. Good day, church. So today is a great day to shout your praises toward God, to shout your worship toward Him. Amen. Sing, I give you. I give you praise for you deserve it. I give you praise for what you've done. I give you praise for you are able. I give you praise till I overcome. I give you praise when the sun is shining. I give you praise in the dark of night. I give you praise when the battle rages. I give you praise till the works are right. Shout of the king is among us. God lives here in our praises. I give you praise for what you've done. I give you praise for you are able. I give you praise till I overcome. I give you praise when the sun is shining. I give you praise in the dark of night. I give you praise when the battle rages. I give you praise till the words are right. Yeah. 
We praise you and we shout our praises before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Jam CCDO, and we are so glad that you can join us today. 
The following are our regular church activities and we invite you to join us. If you open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, you will find that Jesus continued to encourage his disciples to give their tithes. However, Jesus said that along with giving their tithes, they should also practice grace, mercy, and faith. Today, dear brothers and sisters, I hope and I pray that as you give your tithes unto the Lord, the Lord will bless you abundantly. Yet remember that we give God our tithes as an honor and as a worship to God. And we believe that as we do so, He will also show His faithfulness to us. May God bless you as you faithfully give and as you honestly return to the Lord what truly belongs to God. So mayong gabi sa tanan. Welcome to our Unite and Merry Christmas. No, karon kay December na, dool na kayo ang Pasko. Kita as Pilipinos, pag December na murag Pasko, nagyud for the whole December. In fact, 100 days pa lang daan before Christmas kay ga anticipate na ta, ga celebrate na ta. Um, unfortunately karon sa COVID-19 nga time, na uh, dili kayo pariha ka bibo as uh, the previous years before. However, dili yun ni mo mawala sa culture sa Pilipino ang pag-celebrate sa Pasko. Uh, to many people, Christmas is about giving gifts or receiving gifts. Others, it's about seeing your ninong in ninang that you you often do not always see or <laughs> kanang ayara ni mo makitaan pag Pasko atong mga nino ug ninang na na imuang aminan lang pag Pasko or pwede baka ha pod nga ang ninong ug ninang na kauban nimo tibuok year pero pag Pasko kay wala na kay magtago right uh, in the same way pod we think of Christmas or we think of Dezem- December um, we think about the food that is served the gathering of families ang bakasyon na ginahatag sa Pasko para sa mga estudyante o sa mga trabahante. There are so many things that we can associate with Christmas. But the most important thing that we think of as Christians when we talk about Christmas is Jesus Christ and His birth. Of course, we know, dili December 25, good na tao si Jesus. But it is not important when Christ was born. But what is important is that why Jesus Christ was born. And tonight, in fact, for the whole December, our focus will be on the message of Christmas. And I, uh, specifically, will talk about the King, Jesus Christ the King, and His coming kingdom. But before we start, let's all take a moment to pray. So let us pray. Lord, our God and King, thank you for this wonderful night. Thank you for enabling us to gather together to listen to your word. I pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts and minds to receive your word tonight. Give us wisdom that we may take your message and fully integrate it in our hearts. Use me as your instrument. Deliver your message to the hearts and minds of the people that are listening tonight. Enable us, Lord, to hear from you. And we pray that your glory and your blessing will be upon us as we hear your word and as we are sanctified by your word. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, mayong gabi again. Uh, before we continue with the message, let's read in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 18. So, follow with me. 
Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the, where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over the young child, over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men then as fulfilled was spoken by jeremiah the prophet saying a voice was heard in rama lamentation weeping and great mourning rachel weeping for her children refusing to be comforted because they are no more so when we look at the story, we are going to focus on the characters, the three characters nga ang reaction nila sa pag-abot ni Christ. Or ang reaction nila sa news that Jesus has been born, the King of the Jews has been born. So who are these three characters? And what was their reaction to the news of Jesus, the King's birth? So let's look at these characters. Pinakauna, si Herod. Verse 3 to 4 says, When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Let's focus on the word, he was troubled. Na troubled si Herod. Now, kinsa man si Herod. So we need to know his background and who he is. Una, Herod was called Herod the Great. He was the uh, he was dubbed the great or named the great because he was a great builder. During his time, daghan kayo mga significant sites na iyahang napabuhat, na iyahang na na project. Kung sa ato pa sa kagayan, marag si Moreno uh, nakapabuhat og mga highway, nakaparilis og funds para sa bridges, nakapadugang og mga buildings, marag inana. And there are even sites and buildings that um that Herod finance and build built nan hantud karon na apagihapon of course dili na siya maingon nga functional or mapuyan pero tourist spot siya sa Israel makitan pagihapon siya dadto so he was a great builder and he he helped in improving the economic uh, economic kanang economic na life or economic na um, wealth sa Jerusalem. Gitabangan niya ang temple na mas mo, mo lago pag yun. gi niya with silver, uh, with gold, and gi improve niya ang temple ni Solomon. So, he he was favored by the Pharisee and the priests 
tungod kay kanang nagigi atiman ni ang temple sa Ginoo. Uh, and his reason and purpose for that, of course, is not because he worships God. In truth, this is a man who loves fame, fortune, power. He loves being a ruler. He was set up as a king by the Roman Empire. He was the type of king who would stop at nothing to destroy any threat to his rule. Later atong ihisgot nga naman. Una, when he knew about Jesus, he was hostile. Of course, nakabutang sa verse, nagiingon dad to nga kanang gusto daw niya i-worship. Pero kunuhay ra to. In truth and in reality, in his heart, he felt that Jesus, who was called the king, would be a threat to his power, to his throne. Nga naman, kani si Herod, he is a false king. He is an Idumean or an Edomite. He descended from uh, from Esau, muna si Edom, and dili siya pwede mahimug hari. Kaya ang rightful na king should be an Israelite, descended from Jacob, specifically from the line of David. So, dili pwede nga hari yun, Kani si, kani si Herod. So, na threat sa iyang throne. And if you study the history of Herod, daghan ni siyang tao gipapatay tungod kay threat sa iyang rule or sa iyang kingship. Na siya mga anak na iyang gipapatay. Na ay mga wife niya na iyang gipapatay. Na ay brother-in-law niya na iyang gipatay personally. And even the families of those that are a threat to his rule, iyang gi-murder. This man loved his wealth and power so much that if anyone was a threat to that, he was willing to commit murder or any kind of heinous crime para, para lang protektahan ang unsa ang iyaha. And Herod is the picture of a person who is in love with the world. The power, the money, the fame that comes with the world. 1 John 2.15 says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. And 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Daghan kay tao. Because they love the world, they love wealth, they love riches, they love money. They are willing to do the most indecent and evil acts. And many times, even in the story of Jesus, na yung mga tao na dili makafollow kang Christ, even though the, the, the news of God's kingdom is very good news, even though na atoy story na nai isa ka rich man ni Duol Kang Christ and ingon siya na what can I do to be born again? He was interested with the message of Christ. Unfortunately, he could not follow Christ tungod kay ang gababag sa iyaha, iyahang riches. Jesus knew what was holding him back and Jesus told him, sell all your possessions to the poor and come follow me. Kaya ang imong riches mo nang gababag sa imo sa pagsunod. Moto ang gina-imply ato sa gingo ni Christ. But this man was unable to follow Christ because he loved his possessions and he was unwilling to let them go in order to receive or to gain God's kingdom. There are people who love the world and the things of the world. Money, fame, power. They would rather rule in their kingdom on earth than serve and submit under God's kingdom. Lisud ka ayo para sa isa ka tao na pilion ang kingdom ni God if ang iyang hinigugma ang mga butang sa kalibutan. Maybe you're a person wherein you're trying to search for God and know Him and you cannot find the value of God's kingdom over the things that you possess. Na yung mga tao nga mag-think na nganong kailangan ako si Jesus na dato naman ko. Nganong kailangan ako si Jesus na famous man ko. Nganong kailangan ako si Jesus. What can he offer me? And we can attribute that to some preachers who preach about prosperity 
that if you you believe in Christ, you will be rich, will wealthy, and healthy. Mo nang problema. People don't come to Christ because you will be given the material things of the world. In fact, Jesus even said, if kana ang babag sa imuhang pagduol kang Christ, boy inatanan, biya inatanan. The reason why we come to God, why we need Him, is because we are sinners in need of salvation. And the offer of Christ's kingdom is an offer of salvation, an offer of forgiveness, an offer of an eternal relationship with God. And when you're in His kingdom, there is no more poverty, death, or sin. But we, who are sinners, are condemned to death because of our sin and our love for the things of the world, the pleasures of the world. And if you are a person who loves the world, it will become a hindrance to you in coming to God's kingdom. In fact, Jesus uh, says in Matthew 13, 44, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. In ani ang pag-compare ni Jesus sa kingdom of heaven? In order for you to truly desire the kingdom of heaven, love it, seek after it, you must be willing to love God's kingdom more than anything in the anything in the world to the point na mas buian pa ni mo ang uban na butang just so that you can gain access to God's kingdom. If you are the type of person na para sa imuha, Jesus is a threat to your possession and your worldly desires, then you will reject Christ and be hostile against Him. But if you are willing to receive the offer of God's salvation and the invitation to His kingdom, then you will humble yourself before God, repent of your sins, and put your faith in Jesus Christ alone. I tell you, in Mark 8, 36, the Bible says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Walay pulos ang mga butang dali sa kalibutan at the face of your temporary life. Eventually, you will die. The possessions that you have, the power that you have accumulated, the fame that you have gained, it will one day fade away. When you are in death's door, you will realize the temporary things of this world, you cannot, you cannot take it with you in the second life. Eventually, Herod died. And who was the one who ruled his kingdom? Iyang mga anak. After sa mga anak, lain na sa And after the dayon anak, lain na sad. They could not take those riches in eternity. The only thing that you can ever achieve or take in eternity, that eternal relationship that you have with God. And that relationship will, will assure you of an eternal life together with Him. This world and the kingdoms of the world will eventually pass away. But the kingdom of God will last forever. Second, the second characters natong tanawon o i-observe. The Jews. Okay, the Jews. Verse 3 and 4 says, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Now, nga man na trouble ang Jerusalem. So, nasabta na nato ang kang Herod. Herod, nga nung di siya ganahan, nga na si Jesus. A threat to his throne. A threat to his material wealth and his possessions. Nga ang Jerusalem hadlok man. Tungod kay, kani sila, Kabalo sila, if si Herod troubled, if si Herod na ay problema, if si Herod na ay threat sa iyang throne, pwede sila madamay and pwede sila mamatay. And in fact, in verse 16, si Herod, katong nabalaan niya, nga ang mga wise men ni Hawa, and na-deceive siya. Ang iyang gibuhat, gipapatay niya ang mga bata ang children sa mga Israelites, two years old and under. So the Israelites were afraid when Jesus, when the news of Jesus came. And it's very sad and a bit ironic. Ano man, 
for hundreds of years. The Israelites have been waiting for their coming king and savior. Pero sa panahon nga mao na tong adlaw, mao na tong time na naa na si Jesus, gireveal na siya and kabalo sila sa scripture. Take note. Si Herod wa siya kabalo sa scripture. Ang Israelites kabalo. In fact, nangutana pa si Herod sa ilaha kung kanus ni mga anak ang king of the Jews, as a man, kabalo sila. And yet, they did not search for him. Na, nakita ninyo ang story, wala nila gi-search for si Jesus. Look at verse 16. Katong nakabutang dira, 2 years old and under. Based sa pag-appear sa star, na, na, na surmise, na, na studyhan ni Herod, na posible si Jesus na anak 2 years na before ni Abot ang Magi. That means, sa time na nakita sa mga Magi si Jesus Christ, 2 years old na siya. No? Sa chapter 1, wala, wala tagi story giingnan about sa time na ni Pas. Sa so chapter 1, na siya sa manger, na anak siya na do, na is shepherds ni Uban sa yaw ni attend. But during the time sa Magi na na story, wala tagiingnan kung pila ka years ni Pas, pero makakita tag picture kung pila na. Verse 16, ingon, na base sa giingon sa Magi, posible na 2 years old na si Jesus. Katong nakita nila si Christ. Or search for nila si Christ. And may imagine mo makapangutana ka. Kabalo ang Israelites na maabot si Jesus, kabalo sila na maanak siya, pero wala sila nangita kang Christ. Wala sila nangita kay Christ. Nga naman, hadlok sila. They were afraid because they might be killed by Herod the king for searching for their promised king. Pila kay years nila gihulatan, pero pag abot sa panahon na naa na, they did not care. They did not care because what was more important to them? Their own circumstance. Their own life. Of course, importante man ang ilahang own life, good put. Your life is important as well. But, kaninga time, wala na realize sa mga Israelites kung unsa ka important ang ang tao na dapat nila gipangita ang child na naanak sa ilaha wala nila na realize kung unsa ka importante si Jesus who is their eternal king and ang naitabo they were too passive they were too apathetic to the birth of Christ they did not care about him because they were engrossed in their own life Nasa ilang problema gina-face ka ron, mamatay mi. Uh, di, dili mi ka nang makapanginabuhi. O tarong, we, we would rather stay nga ka nang normal na ang life. Wala na ginabuhat. Dili na gapada yun. Okay na na si Christ. Ka nang, di na na mo siya isik. Wala na ni sulod sa ilang huna-huna. Because they were focused on their own circumstance. No wonder. In John 1, 11. 11. John 1, 11. No, John says, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Ang mga Israelites wa nangita sa iya when he was born, although they knew when he would be born. They did not search for him, they did not celebrate him, they did not rejoice at his birth. In fact, God had to call shepherds. He, he used angels to call shepherds to celebrate the birth of Christ. Luke 2, 8-20 to notes that, Ang mga shepherd pa noon that are lowly and humble, motong itawag ni God, to attend the celebration of Jesus' birth in a manger. Humbly in a manger. Because His people did not search for Him, did not accept Him, did not even try to celebrate Him. The shepherds that were humble, they were the ones that were called by God to share the good news of God's favor to the world. In Luke 8, 10, 17, it says, The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. The message of the joy of the coming king was given to shepherds. And those shepherds, in verse 17, shared that message to the people. Gishare nila ang good news. Maragapon o kanang if Christian ka, share ni mo ang salvation about kang Christ. And this was good news. The Savior of the world, the Savior of Israel came into the world. He was born. But His people did not care. And it was the shepherds that rejoiced with the angels and shared about Christ. 
a lot of people in our time are like the Israelites. They do not have any want to have anything to do with Christ. There is a generation or the generation we have today is a generation that does not care about God. In fact, it's a generation that is rejecting God. And I would say tungod pud na kay ang previous na generation wala gitudluan og tarong about sa Bible ang generation nga sunod. And so a lot of people, a lot of young people are atheists. They deny God. Or if they do not deny God with their thoughts or their minds, they deny Him with their life. They claim sila that they belong to Christ or follow Christ, yet they do evil and follow how the world lives. There are people who don't care about God's kingdom, about the message of His kingdom, about the message of salvation or the good news of salvation. And what's more sadder, is that there are Christians who are in Christ, believe in Christ, live in Christ, but like the Israelites, they do not want to share the gospel, nor celebrate the gospel of salvation, nor take joy in the gospel. They are so focused in, in the problems they face in their life. And tinood, naka-experience po ko nga, Ma-overwhelm ka sa mga problema sa imong kinabuhi. Dagan problema, uh, samtang nata dari sa kalibutan. Jesus said it, in this world we will have trouble. But we should not allow the problems we have in life to stop us from spreading the gospel of the joy of our salvation. In truth, that is what awakens a Christian's heart and gives him passion when he wants to move forward in his life. Kung down big tao ka as a Christian, kung low ka, kung dagan ka ginaaging uh, problema, dagan ka gina face na trouble, share the gospel of Christ. You will be uplifted with joy. Tungo kay ma-realize ni mo na imuhang gina, ginahisgutan ang eternal uh, it, eternal news, eternal good news. Kana bitaw kung nakay ginastoryahan na ka ng kanang good news, tsada nga balita. When we talk about a happy event or a joyful event, di ba, di ba kanang mu, mu, mu sidlak ka? Di ba kay naay, naay mu well up from the pit of your stomach up to the, the, the part of your heart that calls you and causes you to rejoice and be happy? Tungod na kay within us as Christians, there is that desire to proclaim Christ and the Holy Spirit pushes us to do so. When we suppress it, when we close, close our hearts, when we do not want to share the gospel, we suppress the joy and the passion that comes when we rejoice of the birth of Christ and His salvation. And mo ang problema sa ato akaron as Christians. We are so troubled in life. We are so focused in this world. And we forget the message of God's kingdom. And I know we have trouble, but it should never stop us from sharing the gospel. So when we are following Christ, we should reject apathy. We should overcome apathy. We are called by God to share the gospel. We find joy in sharing the gospel. Don't be apathetic like the Israelites. Spread the word of God's kingdom. Share to them the joy of your salvation. Now, dili ko gaget in sa ministry. Dili ang ang ministry akong ginastorya. Dili ang pag-serve sa PWT or sa ushering or sa Kanang anything inside ministry or outside ministry? What I'm talking about is that personal decision and call of God for our life as Christians to share the gospel of Christ. And I tell you, if you're a person who consistently shares your faith, who consistently talks about God, you will find in your heart a joy that wells up every time that you do so. It's the same way as kanabitaong Kung nakai tao nga love nimo, you're in love with that person. Kabantay ka sa imong kagalingon na kung musturiya ka about sa iya sa uban tao, gakalipay ka. When you talk about them, when you think about them, 
when you think about Christ, when you talk about Christ, when you share about Christ, you will bloom and be filled with joy. The number one key to overcome apathy is to go and share the gospel to those who do not know him. Lastly, the third characters na gusto nato hisgutan, ang magi. Now, where did these magis came from? Amo na sila gikan. Kay mating ang lalagtagkalit sa, sa New Testament, na magi. Sila kabalo about kang Jesus, mas knowledgeable pa sila kaysa sa mga Israelites, and mas aware Mas devoted pa sila sa pagpangita kang Christ. Aha man sila gikan. Now let's read in Daniel 2.48. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts. And he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men or the magi of Babylon. Now, gi- gi- add na ko ng magi na word dira. But... The Magi are the wise men. Ang origin nila kay ang Babylon and ang nag-influence sa ilaha si Daniel. Daniel was a prophet. And if you read the book of Daniel, nakabutang po dito ang prophecy about kang Jesus Christ and kanus asya mo abot. That is why the Magi knew about Christ kay kanis si Daniel gituluan sila, gishiran sila about sa coming ni Christ. And eventually, some of them, maybe not all, some of them were converted to the faith in believing in the one true God of the Bible. So, mo din ni sila na nito sila kang, kang God sa promises niya and sa coming na Messiah. Mo ni na throughout their generation of Magis, ang, ang message ni Daniel, even though mga 400 years na nikapin na nilabay nadala from the time of Babylon until the time of Jesus and kani sila followers ni sila ni God these people are genuine followers they celebrated the coming of Christ they desired to meet him they wanted him they wanted his kingdom and although wala nila na fully understand ang message sa kingdom ni God that is because wala pa man na fully reveal ang New Testament ani no siguro sa ilang thinking um, the king who was born he would rule the earth sa time na buhi sila so muna ang thinking siguro sa mga magi but they had hope and were filled with joy knowing who this born king, promised king was, and that he was now here. Kani ang mga magi na connections kay Daniel. And what's significant about them, if imong studyhan bitaw, na ay importance nga sila ang gitawag ni God na muadto kang Christ and maghatag sa iyaha o gifts. Nga man. Nakasulat nila, I think, nasa PowerPoint, no? The Magi are considered to be kingmakers. Kani sila, nasa lay authority to crown a king or to depose a king. Pwede nila hatagan og authority ang isa katao na mahimog king or kwaon sila. And when the Magi came to Christ and brought their gifts, that was a coronation. It was a legal coronation of the Magi giving Jesus, the, the, the brand, the authority, the name of king. So, sila ang mga coronator ni Jesus Kibali here on earth. Sila gigamit ni God to coronate Christ. To give Him that kingly nga, nga ceremony. So, ang coronation ni Christ na hitabo when He was two years old with the Magi having the authority to crown Him king. Ano na nakita nito sa verse? No, sa verse 9 to 11, When they departed, uh, the star which had been in the east went before them till it came and stood over with the young child. And where the young child was, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Amazing kayo. Ang Magi na dili Israelites, na nasiran lang sa prophecy, muna noon sila ang naay heart and desire to seek after Christ. And from the Magi, dira na to makitaan bitaw ang kanang kanang dapat desire pud nato. 
Their, their joy when they saw Jesus. Their desire to worship Him. Makita nato dere sa Matthew. The, the divinity of Christ. Tungod kay, when the Magi worshipped Him, no one, no one stopped them. They worshipped at the feet of Christ because He was God in the flesh. The promised Emmanuel. Inashi dere karon. And why was the joy of the Magi so great when they saw Jesus? Atong tanawon ang mga gifts na ilahang gihatag sa kang Christ. Let's look at the gifts. No, the nice significance and gifts na gihatag sa mga Magi. And we will look at it one by one. Una ang gold. The gold represented Jesus as being a king. Uh, ang mga things na kanang ga indicate sa king, di ba? Ang wealth ga indicate sa yung wealth of power is gold. Sa ilaha nga time, a crown was made of gold, sometimes with jewelry or gems, but mostly with gold. So that the gold that was given signified Christ being king and his authority. Second, the myrrh. Ang myrrh is like a perfume. Mo ni siya ang uh, ginagamit sa mga tao para pahumot. And at the same time, ginapahumot ni siya sa mga lawas na gakaagnas na. And the symbol of this is the fact that the world is, uh, giingon pa sa isa ka pastor, a stinky world. Well, actually, it signifies the world, the world being in sin and is dying and will deteriorate. And so, para makover ang deterioration, ang death, kailangan ng perfume. And it also symbolizes man, ang tao. Ang tao na mamatay. Ang tao na tungod sa sala, mo deteriorate. So, kailangan tagmer para mapahumot ta. And it signified the fact that Jesus now has a body that will grow old. And it signifies Him being man in His humility. King. His authority, man in his humility, and lastly, frankincense, incense. Ang incense gina offer sa isa ka God or gina offer kang God specifically in the Old Testament when they offered their sacrifices na ay incense, and it would go up to the throne room of throne room of God, and ang uh, ang smell uh, uh, would would be accepted by God. So frankincense was a sign, a symbol of what? Jesus being God, His divinity. Gold for His kingship and authority. Myrrh for His humanity and His humility. And frankincense for Him being God, His divinity. And the reason why the wise men rejoiced, it is because they understand that the baby before them is a king. That will establish not a kingdom that is temporary and will disappear, but a kingdom that will last forever, that is eternal, because He is God. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the God and King over His eternal kingdom. Knowing that the coming kingdom of God is an eternal kingdom that will have no sin, suffering, or poverty. We are filled with exceeding joy, just like the wise men, and hope as we wait for the coming kingdom of Christ. Our kingdom is not of this world. Now, as Christians, we believe in Christ. This is not where we will be staying forever. Mawala aranitanan. This is temporary. The things we possess, the things that we have, don't lay your foundation in this world because it will one day be toppled down and disappear. Rather, this temporary life will disappear but our place is in eternity with Jesus as our King. And yes, it has not yet happened. Yes, it will be for the near future. And people are saying, Hapit na mubalik si Christ. All the more we should rejoice and all the more we should share the gospel of Christ. All the more we will share the coming kingdom 
of Jesus. And like the shepherds in the story, we rejoice and we share that good news. Like the magi in the story, we are filled with exceeding joy. The king is coming. His kingdom is at hand. And anyone who receives that news with repentance, humility, and faith will be part of God's kingdom. To conclude, as a point to ponder, do not love this temporary passing world. world. Do not ignore the good news of God's kingdom because of your present circumstance, but rather rejoice for the kingdom of God is at hand and all who look to the Son and believes in Him shall be invited to His kingdom and serve Jesus the King. What is your breakthrough word? Send it to your mentor so that uh, they may acknowledge na no, nakapaminaw ta karon and we have received God's word for tonight. So before we end and before I end uh, in closing sa prayer, let's pray for these prayer points na nakasulat sa ato ang uh, screen. First, let's pray for the leaders of the church. Okay, let us pray. Lord, akong ginalift up sa imo ang leaders for, of the church. We pray for wisdom on their part. God, help them that they may know what they need to do as leaders so that they will be faithful in all that they do. May you give them victory over everything, Lord, that they are facing. As leaders, I know daily easy na nga task, daghan challenges, daghan mga kanang hurdles na kailangan ma-overcome. Lord, help them to overcome those things. Give them peace of heart and mind that even through the stresses sa ilahang pag um, fulfill sa ilahang leadership na role, dili nila makalimtan that they are doing it out of joy and love for you. I pray, Lord, for your guidance, Tanan leaders, as 2021 is coming soon. Help us, Lord, to plan out our days and our months so that we may, we may know what to do and that we may use every day skillfully and wisely. Just as um, Moses said that, Lord, teach me to number my days so that I will live a heart of wisdom. Help us, Lord, to number our days. Help us, Lord, to plan for the coming year. Lead us, God, to ways where we can um, draw more people to Christ, share the gospel even more, and, uh, and, and bring more passionate church members to your throne room desiring to serve you with all their hearts. Lord, I pray that we will be faithful in the call you have given to us na dilip mi maluya or kapuyon, but we will always be joyful in all that we do. Lord, we also pray, no, sa next at sa mga church members, God, I pray for hunger for your word na ma-awaken na sa ang kasing-kasing. Help us, Lord, to desire you, love you, to pray, to seek your word, to love your word, and enable us, Lord, to just desire you more than anything else. I pray for your protection against the sickness, ilayo mi sa sakit, ilayo mi sa COVID-19. Um, secure us, O God. Protect us. Heal those that are sick now. Kung na may members sa church na nagka-COVID, God, I pray for your healing and protection sa ila. I pray for more passion sa among hearts in sharing the gospel. And I pray na dili may more rely on passion, although we desire that we will be passionate, but may our emotions not lead us, but rather help us, God, to be led by your word, by your inspiration, and by the Holy Spirit, so that in season and out of season, we will share the word with joy. Lastly, God, I pray for our city and our country. I pray for the fast development of vaccine. Nana daw vaccine, ginabuhat diri sa Pilipinas. And so we pray for wisdom to those that are developing it. I pray that it will be effective and it will benefit the, the Filipino people and even the people around the world. We pray, Lord, for unity for our leaders sa among country. Na instead na mag and instead na ipa kanang ipalabaw ang agendas nila, pili o nila, Lord, na mag, mag-unite pili o nila na buserve, pili o nila na buhaton kung unsa ang tama and that they would let go of their grudges and ang ilahang mga 
uh, pagdili sa sinab tanay. I pray Lord for provision and aid for those that were stricken by the flood dito sa Luzon and even for the people nga kanang mga na naigo na salanta sa bagyo God I pray for your provision sa ilaha Lord protect this nation heal this nation I pray Lord na we will return to you God we know na layo mi sa imuha we are seeking our own desires we have so many idols in our life and we pray God that we would submit to you that this nation will turn to you and that God you will create an awakening in the hearts of the people here use your people use the christians around this nation to share the gospel to be unwavering in their faith and to spread your word i pray for wisdom to to lead the leaders god help the leaders na sila ma christ center that they will know christ that they will live in accordance with your law because if you are exalted in this nation then this nation will be headed the right way give us wisdom lord bless us and help us and i pray that you will be glorified in our life in the life of every christian in the life of our leaders in the life of this nation and i pray lord that we will rejoice in your coming kingdom now this god we give you the glory the honor and the praise in jesus name we pray amen For you deserve it I give you praise for what you've done I give you praise for you are able I give you praise till I overcome I give you praise when the sun is shining I give you praise in the dark of 